this video I'm going to show you three different ways to cut out stock models. I'm working in Adobe Photoshop uh, CC 2018 and that's going to have a few particular features that older versions do not have although I will show you the features that older versions do have so that you can still follow along. So basically we are going to do an easy cutout a hard cutout and one that has some tricky lighting and we're gonna get that hair. So the first method is actually really simple. Um, up in the wherever your toolbar is, usually it's on the left side, I prefer it on the right side because I'm right-handed. Um, I go to the quick select tool and I can pull down pretty quickly on my entire model. And I'm using, you can do this with a mouse, I have a pen tablet. Um, I do recommend a pen tablet if you're going to be doing a lot of selections as that will be overall easier to really fine tune things. But you can do this with a mouse too. Uh, there are some areas here that it didn't select, so I would hold down Alt on the keyboard and I can just take those areas out. Now I'm going to use a layer mask which is down in the lower right and that gives me a pretty good cutout. So when I'm cutting things out, I like to put two layers underneath that are gradients and one will be a white to black and I'm gonna duplicate that layer and reverse it in a black to white and what this does is it shows me really clearly how my model is going to show up against different colored backgrounds like if I had a light colored background, I wouldn't need to have to pay as much attention to the hair. But because I have a dark colored background, that's going to be something I need to work about. So this is a pretty decent first selection, but it's not, I mean it's adequate, but you're not going to want to stay there. So the first thing I usually do is work with the hair. And I'm going to do that by going into my layer mask, double clicking on it, and that opens up this select and mask dialog. And there's a couple things you can do here. You can, you, I mean, you can actually select from within this. I tend not to do that. I like to select from the main screen. Um, the second is the one that you will probably use the most, the second little button here on the side. And what that does is when you have a rough selection, you can go over it and start to pick out the individual hairs that got a little lost the first time around. Now this isn't perfect, it's not 100% precise, it sometimes subtracts things that you really don't want to subtract. But for getting the little fine hairs pretty quickly, it does a pretty good job. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. Um, there's some of these areas that have white spots behind them. And you can sort of see uh, transparency faded to the original photo here. You can see where there's some hairs that I haven't picked up yet. And I'm moving that transparency slider on the upper right. So this is getting a lot of the little hairs, but not enough of them for a super fine hair selection. But if I'm doing this pretty quickly, that will probably be adequate. Now you can go over 
these edges too. But what happens is a lot of times photos that have lighter backgrounds, it will pick up this rim that you just really don't want. So I'll show you how to get rid of that later. So now that we mostly have the hair cut out, I'm just going to hit OK. So you can see on this picture, it's not looking great with a black background. Looks a little shoddy with a white background, so we're not going to want to leave it that way. Um, what I do at this point is duplicate my layer, and I'll put the copy behind the original. And I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to set it to a solid color, and I'll pick one of the darker colors from the hair, and then clip mask this to my original layer. And I'm going to set this layer to multiply. Now on my top layer here, I'm going to take, go into my layer mask, make sure I have a black brush which will subtract it, and then start to take out some of these edges that have that white ha halo around them. Just a bit of a white haze. So it's actually erasing it from that original layer. And what happens is when you put it on a white background, I erase that part, but on this under layer, which is actually purely brown, it keeps that right there. So on this under layer, I don't want anything but the hair. So I'm going to take my lasso tool and just make a really broad selection just so it's only the hair. And I'm going to invert this selection by pressing Control shift i and then using the fill bucket on black. Or possibly not. Okay, so I filled that with my background color by pressing Control and Backspace, which is, it'll fill it with black or fill it with white. Uh, if you want to fill it with the foreground color, it's Alt Backspace. So when I showed just this mask, that's all I have. And I got isolated the mask by just pressing Alt while I click. So I'm going to deselect the mask with Control D. So now I have a really nice hair cut out. That's really sharp. And the top cuts pretty well. And this works really well with dark hair. Um, sometimes you might want to go in and um, make another layer here. Also clip that down and use your clone tool and uh, yeah, you use the clone tool and then for this I would duplicate that original, bring that in here temporarily so that you can pick up the colors for the clone tool. And if you use a soft brush in the clone tool, press Alt to grab it, you can bring in just a little bit of that hair color on those outer pieces so it doesn't look completely flat. And you really don't want to go too far with that. And it's still going to be multiply, so it will show up dark. 
but it keeps it from being completely flat. And you can even do another layer of that um, with the same mask and especially with for lighter color hair um, to paint some of that back in. So that added a little bit more depth. You can't really see it too much at a distance, but just a little bit more on the sides. Okay, and I actually think her hair, she's cut out pretty well for that background. Well, her hair anyway. So for those edges, I'm going to turn this layer off. So we have this main layer is what we'll be working on for these edges. And I'm going to go back to here. And here's where a tablet really comes in handy. I honestly just freehand the edges out. I use a brush at around three to four pixels, probably 200% zoom. Whoops. And make sure I'm actually on black, so I'm erasing it on my mask. And there's a feature in the newer version of Photoshop where you can smooth your stroke up at the top bar. And I tend to put that on maybe 25%. And what that does when you're painting out your stroke is it keeps it from being a really rough line. Actually, I'm going to increase that just a little bit. And you can kind of go over this pretty quickly. There will be a little bit of edges there. And if you really have the smoothing turned up, you can go over this really quickly and get a nice line. So this does take a little bit of time, but for me, it's worth it. I tend not to like a really sharp cutout, so I do like it a little bit softer edges here. And the smoothing tool is really nice if you don't have a very steady hand, which I don't. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just basically don't want to cut too far into anything. And at this zoom, you're basically just looking for those edges where it will show white. So with that high smoothing, I can just take that really quickly. Here's why I switched to my darker color underneath. And I'm going to turn the smoothing down a little bit around the hands. Smaller areas, you don't want the smoothing on as high. And I'm just going to do this really quickly. Even if you intend to put a glow around your character, I really suggest taking out all these little remnants. And there might be an easier way to do this. I have tried several different methods, but I haven't found one that gave me as good of results. And there, you can do this with the pen tool as well, especially if you don't have a tablet, and I will show you how to do that later. But for taking out the jagged edges really quickly, if you do have a tablet, this just works really well. 
Just make sure you get any skips in there. Okay, well I think you get the general gist of that. See how this side is really nice and clean. Not in here yet, I didn't go through there, but very nice clean cutout. Whereas this side still has that white fringe around it. So it does take a little bit of time, but it's really worth it. And that is the first method. So I'll put her still in the background. Against that background, she will be almost flawlessly cut out. So, and if you see any little bits there, you can, actually I think that's part of the background, yes. You can cut that out as you go. So for really quick uh, composites or pulling things together very quickly, uh, do a quick selection, do the hair method, and then you can really worry about all those lines after you know exactly what model you want to get in.